Alright mateys, welcome back to the Wizard's Yacht Shop. Car Wizard, knock it off. Let's not talk like a pirate day. Let's talk Mercedes. Mercedes, oh, okay, sorry. Airmatic. You guys have cars that have Airmatic. Multiple different models of Mercedes have Airmatic. You go outside and it's flat as a pancake. We're going to go over Airmatic today, all the different components, where they're at, and why this car is in the shop. Right after this. Over the years, I've owned and worked on many, many different Mercedes models that have Airmatic. There's, I had an E500 that had Airmatic. This has Airmatic. E350s have Airmatic. These S-Classes could actually be had with ABC suspension, hydraulic suspension. This one happens to have Airmatic. And I prefer Airmatic because it's not a mess. If it leaks, there's not a puddle on the ground. And it's usually fairly simple to find out what's going on and the parts are still expensive, but they're not ABC system expensive. I would much rather have an Airmatic Mercedes. I'm going to show you guys where everything's located on this car. It's also located in the same place as on an E-Class or various other models. So what I show you today on this vehicle could also apply to other models. Mercedes pretty much follows the same footprint on all their different vehicles. We'll start at the back and work our way forward. Let's get this thing lifted up. So although this has air suspension, it's nothing really, really that fancy. Even the guy who owns this car, he's, he had trouble understanding how does this thing even work. It's not like you have separate airbags, separate struts, separate shocks. The airbag and the strut are all in one unit. This is for you guys that have never really dug into an airmatic system. It's not for you guys that have been through five different sets of them. I want to show you guys how this works and what commonly fails. As you can see right here, it looks like a standard strut and it has kind of a corrugated bellows all the way up into the body. If you come around to the front and there it is you can see all the way up into the body. It's a very long strut with an airbag built in. All four of the struts will have a dampener on the side. That's what that little cylinder shape is. That's for the actual dampening of the shock. For firm sporty ride or a soft comfort ride you can change it with that. But that is not the air suspension portion of the strut. That is the actual fluid dampening of the actual shock absorbing portion of the strut. That's what that has to do with. So in the rear it has two struts, two air lines. As far as pneumatics go, that's all that's back here. It will have one ride height sensor that connects to the sway bar so that the computer can see where the rear wheels are at. Let me show you where that's at real quick. On this car, it's right above the driver's rear CV shaft. So you can see the little box with an arm coming off of it that goes to the sway bar and that tells the computer how high or low their rear suspension is. Not really independent on the rear, it just has rear and then front left and right. That's how this system works. Now we move to the front suspension. It's basically the same setup as the rear except for the strut would have a strut bearing so the wheels can turn but it's still a pneumatic air strut on each side in the front. I'll show you what the strut looks like, but on the front you're not going to have one single right height sensor. You're going to have one for the right and one for the left. Let's take a look. As you can see, it's very similar to what we just looked at in the rear of the car. There's the dampener for the hydraulic portion of the strut, and up above is the bellows where the airbag resides up top of the strut. So as you can see, the little box up top with the little, I'll touch it here, the little silver arm coming off of it. That's the right height sensor for the passenger front. That lets the car know where it is as far as height on this side. So now we're getting to why the car is actually here. We'll go over that here in a minute, how I found out what was wrong. But I want to show you a couple more components and then we'll get into why the car is here. I have the bellows removed from this strut so you can see up inside of it. As you can see, now it's not a bellows up there, it's a silver colored or a chrome type metal. And up inside of here, you can see where the airbag resides, the actual airbag of this strut. You can't see it except for removing the bellows that goes around it. That's the actual air ride portion of this strut. 
Here's our air ride sensor right here, right next to the strut where my finger's touching. That does the driver's front as far as location of the wheel up or down. So that's what you will find at each wheel. There's a set of white colored plastic lines that go to each of these wheels that individually can fill each strut up and raise and lower front, rear, left, right, and vice versa. So all the components I just showed you can raise and lower the car, but not without air pressure. That needs to have pressure to raise the car, and that's where a compressor comes in. No, not your AC compressor. This is a small air compressor, like filling up your tire compressor type of a compressor. And there's a valve block and a few other things that I'll show you. This is the brains of the pneumatic system of the car that does all the controls, raising and lowering your car. Let's take a look. This is the actual compressor right here. It's kind of wobbly. It's supposed to be wobbly. It hangs off of rubber mounts. This is where your compressor resides. This is the passenger front near the bumper, front bumper. On an E-Class, it'd be in the same place, pretty much where they've always been on when I've worked on an Airmatic car. And if you look above the compressor, you see a multitude of white lines converging into a little box. That is the valve block. The compressor provides the pressure that's needed to raise the vehicle, but the valve block is kind of the brain to actually tell, I need this side raised, this side lowered, and it can do all of those controls through the little valve block. As you see all those white lines in there, those can be leaks. What you do is you would have your, start your car, let it try to raise itself, and you start looking for leaks, listening for leaks. You can spray soapy water on all those lines. And we're gonna lower the car and I'll show you some things that we, where the lines are located for the front and also how we found out what's wrong with this car. I'll talk about what happened and how we found what was wrong. So this is the top of the struts. It will be also a similar situation in the rear. You'd have to tear apart all the carpet and stuff in the trunk to get to it, but this is what you would also see in the rear, the same setup. The tops of the struts have an air fitting. When the compressor pumps up enough pressure and the valve block decides to raise a certain corner, let's say it's this corner we're looking at, the air comes through this line into the air strut and starts raising your car. It's a very simple system. Actually, I find it to be very, very simple. We've disconnected this one. It's basically just a, a nut with an O-ring. You can see the black O-ring and it spins. It's got a compression fitting over the line to grip the line. So the question is, why is this car here? The reason why is because he went out to get into his car and the front end was all the way down to the ground and the rear was up in the air, almost like a top fuel dragster or something. And the guy called me, he says, you know, that was cool in the 70s with the hot rods and have the rear end way up in the air, but it's not cool on an S550. It actually is horrible. He said, can you fix this car wizard? I'm not sure what in the world. I know when it tries to pump up, I hear air going pshhh, making a noise, and my front end is flat as a pancake. I said, yes, I fixed many, many of these. We will be able to take care of this for you. The car wizard, with it positioned like that, could he drive it here or did he need to get it towed? He didn't need to get it towed. I'm going to go into that here and tell you guys only one strut was leaking on this car. But when the computer notices that, it will lower the other side as well. So at least you could drive it to a shop and get it fixed without your car. If your car is like this going down the road and you're trying to steer, it could be very, very dangerous. Way more dangerous than just lowering the front, both of them. So. It's easy to see your front flat on the ground and say, my entire front suspension is leaking, when in fact only one strut could be leaking. And the computer senses that and lowers the complete front end all the way down so that you can get it to the shop somewhat safely and not be all cockeyed and goofy looking. Does it do the same thing if it happens in the back? Yes. If something in the back, like I said, there's only one sensor, if it notices that it's not raising or something goes wrong, it'll just lower the back. It'll just kind of give up. So, like I said, he heard a hissing noise or the rushing air noise. I have the bellows removed from this strut and I'm gonna show you guys how I tested it. Junior Mint! Junior Mint's holding an air hose. This is shop air with a little air gun in it. Where we remove the fitting, we're just going to put that right on top of the hole that goes into the strut. We're gonna put shop air into it. These struts typically run 60, 70, 80, 90 PSI to raise your car. So putting shop air to it is not gonna hurt anything. 
You don't want to sit there and hold it at full blast. We're just putting enough in to see can it hold the pressure or does it leak out. Let's take a listen and see what happens. Go ahead and put some air there, Junior Mint. You guys can hear with the microphone. So I can put my hand here and physically feel air rushing over my hand. With a good new air strut, he should be able to put air in it and let off and we don't hear anything. It should hold that air. He should be able to remove that air gun away and the air rushes out of that little hole where the, the fitting went. It should hold air very well. It's not holding air. It's rushing right out of the, the airbag where we remove the bellows. So that tells me this air strut is completely blown out. That is exactly why the front left side went down then the computer went ahead and lowered the front right side to match. All because of one strut went bad. That's all that's wrong. So I've got a new strut on order. We'll go ahead and replace that one. You can replace them in pairs. You probably should recommend replace them in pairs so they're both done. The other one might be on its way out. This customer would like to just go ahead and replace the one and call it good. And I don't blame him because it's very likely it might be a year or two before the next one gives out. This customer also owned the blue Porsche and a black 928 you guys have seen in the background. It's a 1985 928S with 30,000 original documented miles. It'll actually be back in here as soon as we get done with this one for some more work. He's got a few more items he'd like to tack on and get those tackled. So he doesn't mind bringing cars in and getting them fixed. He just doesn't want everything done at once. We'll get this taken care of as soon as it comes in. We're you replace this strut pretty much just like you would replace a strut on any other car, except you don't have to worry about the spring bouncing or hurting you. There, there is no spring because the air is let out. We'll get this strut replaced, reset the codes, and let it bring itself back up. And it will. It'll bring itself back up again and be a happy camper. Right now, it senses that it is letting air into the strut, and it's monitoring the pressure on the pressure sensor, and it sees zero PSI. The computer says, okay, I'll give a little bit more air. I still see zero PSI, nothing's happening. So then the computer knows something's wrong and it just stops. The malfunction will come on the dash, say see a shop, air suspension, all the warning bells and whistles go off. So Car Wizard, this was the strut that was the problem, but what else could be wrong in this system? You could have a compressor that's getting weak. It doesn't physically have the power to raise the whole car because the PSI that's required to raise the car, it's just not being reached. It's too weak. Hoovy's 2005 Phantom Rolls-Royce came in with a weak compressor. It would, it would just take forever and ever and ever to finally raise it. And the computer also monitors that in a BMW, a Mercedes, anything with air suspension, a Range Rover, Rolls-Royce. And it can have where it exceeds a certain amount of time the computer knows, okay, I've been running the compressor for like 30 seconds or a minute. We're still not at our normal ride height. Something is wrong with the compressor. That'll bring up a code as well. Then you know it's time for a new compressor. Another thing is these actual lines that I'm holding right here can have a small hairline crack in them. They can be leaking. That's something that you need to try to get the car to pressure itself up. You can spray soapy water over the lines, around the struts. It could be a very slow leak. It can be very hard to find. This one, however, was not hard to find. It was like someone's holding an air gun open. It was full-blown air coming out. So it was pretty easy to find. One thing you can do to cut your diagnostic time is if you have a buddy or know somebody who has a professional level scan tool, you're not gonna be able to find aromatic codes with a little AutoZone, little OBD2 reader. It's not gonna be able to access those things. You really need a professional level scan tool Just like this one. This is my handy dandy Autel MS908S. Autel gave this to me along with the Maxiscope and several other things quite a bit ago, and I've been using this thing religiously. Very powerful. In house, I have factory Land Rover, Range Rover, Jaguar, Mercedes. I have lots of actual dealer computers, but I rarely have to go get them out of the cabinet. This thing actually does most of everything I've needed to do on most cars. It's pretty cool. But you can use this tool, read the codes, and it will say left front pressure line leak, or it'll say right high sensor signal, or it'll at least give you an idea 
where to start. The scan tool is not going to tell you. It's the left line on top of the strut. It's not going to tell you exactly what's wrong. It's going to give you an idea of an area to look and eliminate all the other areas. So you can focus in that area and save a bunch of time. This one came in, left front strut, pressure line leak. It also had some issues it could not attain ride height up front. It's because of this strut. And that was the only codes that were in it. And that pretty much narrowed it down really fast. We did this air pressure test like I just showed you. Boom, there it is. There's the reason why his suspension was flat as a pancake up front, but not in the rear. The computer didn't detect any problems in the rear, so it left that alone. The Airmatic system is very simple to work with. It's actually way simpler than the ABC system. However, you really should be a very well-versed do-it-yourself mechanic or technician to look at this because this is not a system that you just say, I think it's this part, I think it's that part, and start swapping out parts because these parts are very expensive. Not so much ABC system expensive, but they still are pretty expensive. You say, oh, I'll just replace both front struts. That'll be twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 just for the parts. That doesn't include any labor. So you need to be very diligent on your diagnosis and really narrow it down to exactly what the problem is on the Airmatic system and replace that part and take care of it. Whether it be a line, a valve block, it could be a strut, it could be the compressor. There's really not a whole lot of components. For, for those who are uninitiated with the Airmatic system, you could really think about it and say, wow, there must be four or five hundred parts to this thing. There's not. There's like five or six major components to this, and that's it. It's very simple. There's actually a car in the shop right now we'll be doing a video on soon that really there was no scan tool or anything to find out what was wrong. The local dealership realized it was a little bit above what they wanted to deal with, so they said, can you fix it, Car Wizard? And I said, yes, I'd be happy to. So that will be an upcoming video. We'll show you guys how I found out what was wrong and how it can be very, very difficult to diagnose some of these things. It's not, these are not cars that you want to just throw parts at because you will very quickly go bankrupt. Depending on what make and model of car that you have that has air suspension, they all are very much similar. Range Rovers with air suspension, Rolls Royces with air suspension, Mercedes with air suspension. Any of these vehicles with air suspension is the same technology, the same idea. You have struts, airlines, a compressor, and a valve block. And like on Range Rovers, they'll have an air reservoir where it stores air pressure. But of all these different cars that I've worked on, they really weren't that much different from each other. So once you get one of these systems down and you get familiar with it, you can use that same technique that you use to diagnose on multiple different makes, different models. If you get really familiar with Airmatic, and then you go buy a 2012 Range Rover full size, and it has air suspension issues. It's a right height sensor, it's an air leak at the line, one of the struts is leaking, or a weak air compressor. It's the same, same idea, same stuff. Read the codes, check for leaks with air, with soapy water. The same techniques on a Rolls Royce, which uses BMW components for its air suspension. Car Wizard. You're mentioning all of these European cars. Do any American cars have air suspension? Yeah, they aren't as complex. Or like a Lincoln Mark 7, that will have air suspension all the way around. Some of your Lincoln Town cars, Cadillac DeVilles, and things will have air suspension in the rear only, just for load leveling. It's not really for ride comfort or anything. It's just that if you load it down with a lot of passengers, it can bring itself back up. This here is designed to use air suspension for performance, it can use it for comfort, it can use it for ride height, it can use it for all kinds of different things. And the American car systems will also be very similar on a 2005 Cadillac DeVille, for instance. So have a small air compressor and two air shocks in the back with airlines. All the same stuff. If you go out and the rear end's flat on a Cadillac DeVille like that, check for air leaks. Maybe the compressor's not working, maybe it blew a fuse. All the same stuff. So I didn't want to burst your bubble if you're thinking it's a really complex system, but it's not a very complex system. I thought you guys would really enjoy a video on it and just show, here's the basic components, here's some of the things that can fail. If you have certain codes, there's certain things to check. It's really not hard to work on these Airmatic systems at all. We had a CL55 in here recently that you guys saw the video. We did a conversion to coil springs from ABC. 
The ABC system is so expensive and so complex that it made sense to convert it over to coil springs and be done with it. This, however, I would never steer a customer to a coil spring conversion. It would cost about the same money and you won't have as good as ride and it really would not turn out as good as it could be. I would always, always rather fix Airmatic than to try to convert it over to coil springs. I would frown highly upon converting Airmatic to coil springs. I would say fix it because it can be done fairly cheaply actually, comparatively. So any tools I use in the shop, if you want to know what kind of tools I use in the shop, they're listed in my Amazon affiliates page in the description below. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already, go ahead and do that now. We've got really cool yacht videos and we've got land yacht videos, all kinds of cool videos in the works. Thanks for watching.